your eight string guitar tone sucks. It doesn't cut, it's too flabby, too scratchy, too boxy, too hissy, no more. Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to get an eight string guitar tone that is ridiculously heavy, extremely tight, and there's literally no better guitar to do it on than my brand new Ibanez eight string Meshuggah signature guitar. This is quite literally the eight string guitar. And this is how it sounds. What a lot of people don't understand about eight string guitars is that it's not just a regular guitar with two extra strings added on top of it. It's also more wood, which means more mass, different scale lengths, different string gauges, different pickups. All of those things will not only change how you interact with the guitar itself, but it will also change how the guitar sounds going through an amplifier and the steps that you need to take to dial in a tone, especially a heavy one. Positive Grid were kind enough to sponsor this video, so I'll be showing you guys how to do that with their brand new updated Bias FX2. However, you can use all of these tips and apply them to any sort of real life application or any plugin that you currently own. Bias FX2 has been recently upgraded, so it now contains 10 brand new amps and cabs, as well as the guitar to UI match feature, as well as a big jump and performance and stability so that your projects run smoother and faster. So let's dial in an eight string guitar tone with these brand new amps and cabs. Okay, so we have Bias FX2 loaded up. I've got my guitar with me. Um, I'll be playing it as I go through the preset. Um, it's a pretty stock standard signal chain, but there are some select moves that I've made which I'll go through which make all the difference, especially when you're dialing in an eight string heavy tone. So obviously first off we have a noise gate. Now the sensitivity is super high and the release is super fast, which means that it's basically clamping down on everything that I do extremely quickly. Um, I want it to absolutely cut everything. I want it to be super quote unquote genty. <laughs> It's really not even that tight, like I could ride this threshold even tighter, but then it starts to suck some of your tone as you can probably hear when I dial it back. So around seven um, is a good compromise. Going on to the overdrive now, this is the Cypher drive, which is in Bias FX2. It's part of the Omnis pack from Bias FX and Positive Grid. However, the reason why I've chosen this in particular is because it has this strike knob. Now with the strike knob, basically what it's doing is it's cutting out more low end out of your tone the further up you turn it up. Kind of like the attack knob in a precision drive, a Horizon Devices precision drive. Um, it's almost exactly the same. Um, then you have like additional gain, a tone knob, and then volume. So as you can see, I'm using it more of like a clean boost and I'm cutting out a lot of low end, which is super handy for an eight string tone because when you're putting heavy guitar with heavy string gauges in a low tuning and you're putting it through what would be a traditional heavy amp, um, those amps were not made with the intention of putting notes this low and guitars this heavy into them. So cutting down on any of that low end flub is extremely helpful. And by doing things like, you know, riding the gain pretty low, but riding the actual volume coming out of the pedal really high, what it's doing is it's cutting out the low end, it's accentuating your playing, it's not adding any additional gain, it's just kind of cleaning up your DI and kind of clipping it before it heads into the amp. <laughs> From there we have the Insane 3. Now again, this is part of the brand new amps and cabs that Bias FX2 has been updated with. It is a 5150, um, but there are certain moves that you can do on this 5150 and most 5150s that will definitely help in getting clarity and punch out of your eight string guitars. The first of those moves being turning the master knob down. Now this is something that I see a lot of people um, not doing or they just do it and they don't know why they do it. Essentially, turning the master knob down on any amp, some amps are gonna react differently than others. By turning the master knob down, you're driving the power amp tubes less in the amp. Um, it's getting less saturated. It's not really warming them up as much. So your tone doesn't get as compressed and it doesn't get as warm the lower you put it, which is extremely helpful for heavy guitars that are tuned low because if you turn it all the way up, it starts to get super compressed, really warm, kind of flubby, and it doesn't really do much in helping getting clarity out of your eight string guitar. So I find that on a 5150 amp, anywhere between like 2.5 to 3.5 is usually the sweet spot where you can get some of that clarity back. From there, all of the other controls are pretty standard and to taste. Um, I like dialing in the gain just enough so that I can palm mute. 
turn the tone knob up and try that again. So it kind of carries over into the next palm mute. And it blooms over. For example, like if I did it over here, it's nowhere near gainy enough because it's cutting out straight away. So for this amp and for this purpose, around eight is usually a good spot. All of these values, again, aren't gonna be the exact same across all plugins or amps. You kinda of need to use your ears to figure out what that sweet spot is. But hopefully these audio cues that I'm going through are kinda of gonna give you an insight into how to dial it in no matter what the gear is. Straight after the ant, we have an EQ. Now the EQ isn't really doing much apart from low cutting and high cutting. So as you can see, I'm doing a low cut at around like 80 Hertz and then I'm cutting anything past about 9K. Um, this is before it hits the cabinet. So if you've ever heard what a amp sounds like without a cabinet, it sounds pretty bad. Fizzy, it's not really going into a cab. Um, putting it through a cab makes it sound like a guitar tone in comparison when you listen to it back and forth kind of sounds a bit dark um, because we've just heard that super shrill super high-end tone without the cabinet but doing this and having a cut at around like 9k and about anything below 80 hertz before it hits the cabinet um, and doing it to the actual preamp tone um, is a really great way to again get clarity out of your eight string guitars especially again when you're tuning super low this right now is in drop E. I've got an 80 gauge string on there. It was not meant to be run through this amp in this way with this cab. However, these are the moves that we make in order to kind of get what you would expect a heavy tone to sound like from this guitar, just as you would with a normal six string guitar, maybe tuned to like drop D or drop C or something like that. We then go onto the cabinet now. Again, a Boogie 4x12, a Mesa Boogie Rectifier 4x12, very stock standard cab. However, there are some certain moves that I like doing that I find really bring out the clarity in my eight string and low tuned guitars. Um, the first is blending two different mics together. One of them, of course, being the SM57, but then complementing that with a more lower end rounded microphone like the Ribbon 121. And as you can see by the levels here, the Ribbon 121 isn't on the same level as the 57. It's kind of just complementing it in a way to that whatever the SM57 isn't getting, um, the Ribbon 121 is kind of filling out the sound. I'll mute the Ribbon 121. <laughs> So you can see it's like kind of a bit honky. Um, it doesn't really have much low end. As soon as I unmute the ribbon, it brings some of that low end back and again, just rounds it out ever so slightly. There is room mics and there is the difference between the reality mode and the studio mode. The reality mode sounds a lot rawer. as opposed to the studio mode that's a little bit more scalpel a little bit more surgical. Kind of what you'd expect from a really hi-fi, out of the box amp sim type of sound, which is what I'm used to, which is why I picked studio mode. Um, and again, that's exactly what you heard in the demo song as well. And then the last bit is EQ. Now, again, I'm doing some EQ within the actual tone itself after the cabinet now. So I had this one before the cabinet, now I've got this one after the cabinet. And as you can see by the moves that I've made here, it's not really doing much. It's a little just a tonal scalpel to kind of bring out what I want and to kind of dip down what I don't want. And what I don't want is that flubby kind of sound around like 250, 500, which again, only gets accentuated when you run an eight string guitar in a low tuning or any guitar in a low tuning with aggressive playing, et cetera, et cetera. And then again, because we're boosting a lot of highs, especially in the amp here, like we're boosting treble here, um, we're adding like the overdrive, um, stuff like that. Because we're bringing a lot of high end out of the guitar um, to kind of compensate for the low end that it's producing, there are some certain frequencies around the 4K, 8K region that do get accentuated um, a little bit more than others, which is why I've turned them down ever so slightly but to kind of bring back some life into the guitars without it getting shrill around the 4K region, I have then again compensated by turning up the 16K region and then kind of boosting the upper mid range around one and 2K ever so slightly. When I say like these moves are like between one and two dB, it's not much, but on top of the low cut at, that is happening at 60 Hertz and the high cut that's happening at 13.5K, when I turn this EQ off, there is a noticeable difference. Um, for example, and then I'll turn it off. So 
So you can probably tell that when it's on, it almost doesn't sound as exciting. Um, it definitely sounds more exciting when the EQ is off. However, I'm going in with the mindset of, I need to dial in this tone to be put in a full band mix. If I was just jamming myself and there was nothing around me and I wasn't putting it in a song that had heavy drums, heavy bass, vocals, layers, etc., etc., sure, it would sound awesome with the EQ off. However, again, when we're getting into the mindset of dialing in an eight string tone, to be mixed, to be mastered, to be put in a full demo mix or an actual full blown production mix. These are the moves that you kind of need to make in order for it to sit a little bit better in the mix. So it might not sound as exciting, but. I can guarantee that that is gonna sit much better in a mix um, as it is than this is. So there you have it, that is the signal chain for what I consider to be a great eight string guitar tone. Now, you might be thinking, well, yeah, I do that, or like everyone does that, why, what's the difference? The difference being is that it's more so understanding what you're putting into the amp or what you're actually doing on the guitar that will determine the moves that you make. It's not just following everything that I do and following the exact value on the knobs and hoping that it's gonna work with your guitar, with your interface, with your speaker setup, with your ears. You might not like it when you do it. Um, what I'm trying to go through is explain why I use the strike knob to cut out the low end or explain why I turned the master knob down to get rid of some of that power amp saturation or explained why I did the high cut in the preamp, um, why I use this microphone, all these questions as to why rather than, oh, just do this and you get this result. Um, that is the most important step in dialing in any good tone, not just an eight string or seven string guitar tone. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. Massive thank you to Positive Grid for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check out Bias Effects too, there'll be links below in the description as well as in the comments. If you guys wanna support me directly, you can check out things like tabs, stems, DIs, midis, all that stuff, tones, it's all on the Patreon as well as a bunch of affiliate links down in the description below. Massive thank you to all my Patreons and massive thank you to all you guys for watching. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.